为丢失。
And these shock uh, heats up the material up to a real temperature about 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 7 ke Kelvin. And uh, this creates that CGM. And uh, actually, real shock has never been observed conclusively, ex ex and except for the one example for very high mass end of cluster. So there is a gamma ray, maybe gamma ray counterpart coming from a massive cluster. This is the only one example. And what I'm talking about is much low mass galaxy here. So halo mass is around 10 to the 13 solar mass. Uh, at this mass range, we never had any evidence or detection before for uh, billiard shock. So if ORC are actually billiard shocks, uh, this is the first, e first evidence uh, to detect for the existence of uh, this kind of billiard shock. So this is also interesting. That's why also I'm doing this. This is the motivation. And also, real shocks are characterized by the following quantities. So, uh, so first we have a real assumer mass, real mass. So halo mass is assumed to around uh, 10 to the 13 solar mass based on observation. And then the real radius is about 400 kBc uh, at redshift 0.5. And the shock velocity at this shock radius is uh, actually 400 km per second, uh, which is non relativistic And uh, also, magnetic field is estimated to be around a micro gauss or even less. So, uh, magnetic field energy density is much lower than the CMB energy density. This means inverse quantum scattering of the uh, CMB photon is very uh, actively happening. Therefore, shocked electron must cool dominantly by uh, this uh, inverse quantum process. This time scale is only uh, 20 MHz, which is much smaller than the dynamical time scale of the system. So this is the characteristics. Therefore, synchrotron emission uh, from such electron would be only 1% of the inverse quantum power. Then let me explain the uh, very simple model. This is toy model. So uh, for these are parameters uh, for this model. So first, linear mass. So this is a halo mass. So given this halo mass, uh, we have our linear radius uh, there. And also, uh, below this video radius, shock radius exists. From simulation, uh, shock radius is uh, below video radius of. And behind this shock, you can see a shell-like structure. This is the emitting region in which magnetic field is enhanced by the shock, and also electrons are accelerated. And also, we assume thermokinetic energy of this shock is converted to our uh, electron energy and also, also the magnetic field energy with some specific fraction. So basically, also, we have a shell thickness parameter, and also we assume electron energy distribution is power law, uh, with index minus s, and the minimum Lorentz factor. So this is a typical electron Lorentz factor energy. So this parameter, uh, once we assume, we can calculate the rough estimate of our synchrotron emission strengths. So let's see the general behavior of the model. So if you can please look at the left panel first. And this panel shows the gigahertz per fraction density uh, as a function of our uh, electron energy fraction. Um, y axis is the uh, spectral index S. So, how do they behave? It's very simple. So, if you go to the x axis is larger, this means you have a more energetic electron and also magnetic field. This means a much brighter object. And uh, a smaller S value. Uh, down to 2, it's very extreme value. But the smaller s means you have a more number of uh, high energy electrons. Therefore, this means also brighter direction. So this is also, I see, you see here, uh, 1 millijansky, 10 millijansky counter. This is the observational range. Uh, so I assume here, importantly, this is a fixed mass. And the right panel uh, is also similar here. But in this case, I only show a 5, five millijansky uh, dense counter. And uh, I changed video mass in this case. So you can see many uh, red part here. And uh, basically, if you go to the right down corner, it is a less massive end. And uh, this end, on this end, uh, it is already reaching uh, energy conversion uh, fraction of 1. So this means 100% of the shock energy must be used for acceleration. So this is crazy. So it's very difficult to explain the observation. Uh, on the other hand, if you go to the top left, uh, left side, uh, it is massive halo. Uh, this is very naturally uh, means uh, you have more number of electrons, uh, so you have uh, you can more easily explain the observation. However, massive halo number is not really 
drastically decreases as a function of mass. So you have to be in the maybe middle of this panel. So this is the message. So uh, this is a general behavior over a simple model. And uh, let's um, apply this model to observation. Here I again show uh, three uh, auto radio circles so far confirmed um, with a galaxy uh, counterpart inside it. So they have a redshift estimate. This allows us to uh, estimate the physical radius of auto radio circle and we can determine the energy. So let's assume uh, this uh, redshift. Then you can see here, again, the same figure, but uh, this red curves show here, uh, showing the region where uh, they are consistent with observed flux density at gigahertz. So you can see three lines. This is just uh, depending on the assumed uh, minimum electron energy. So there is no much, no, not so much difference. And uh, we need to have one more constraint, observational constraint to uh, constrain the really, uh, the parameter space. And this is the y-axis. Actually, from spectral measurement, we can infer the black value of our electron index S. So I show in blue uh, this error range. Pretty huge error range. But as you can see here, uh, the black dash circle shows the, a consistent region uh, between our theory and also ORC observation. So roughly speaking, let's say 1 to 10% of the shock energy must be converted to the uh, acceleration and the magnetic field enhancement. So in this case, this is consistent with observation. OK, so quickly, I want to also uh, discuss the implication of our theory. So one important uh, observational quantity is shell thickness. Uh, this is actually measured uh, roughly 10% of the size of the auto radio circle. This is the emitting region. This is 10% from observation. But this cannot be uh, explained by free streaming electron, by advection. So electron streaming with constant velocity behind the shock uh, over lifetime, so inverse quantum cooling time scale. Uh, this is actually less than 1%, so you cannot explain. Therefore, shell must be diffusion dominated. So electron must diffuse uh, through this process. Then uh, we can explain 10% with here, D is the uh, diffusion coefficient. And this value is around 10 to the 30. And this value is actually right in the ballpark of theoretical prediction for D in the low, CG, low density CGM. This, there is no way to measure this uh, observationally so far. Therefore, if ORC a video show, this can imply, uh, we can infer the actual value of D at the CGM region uh, from observation. This is kind of a wonderful prediction. OK, I quickly I finish here. So basically, there is an inconsistency with the mass of a uh, uh, number density of radio circle and the real shock. But if we consider some efficiency issue, and also uh, not all our real shocks are completely realized, therefore, there is some reduction of the number density, then uh, this scenario could be uh, plausible. OK, I finish here. And the one uh, message is, uh, of course, I show everything could be consistent with an auto radio circle if we assume video shock. But even if auto radio circle are not video shocks, uh, based on this kind of model prediction, uh, this could be a very interesting uh, radio observation target in the future. Thank you so much. I take questions.